article that looks into the effects of technology on culture and finding ways to prolong human life. Sounds really interesting. We're welcoming author Eileen Pollack to CT Style to tell us more about the professor of immortality. It sounds very interesting. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Give us a look at the plot. Well, um, maybe I'll t tell you how I came to write it and that'll say what it's about. Um, I moved to Michigan to teach at the university there in the 90s and soon afterward the Unabomber published his manifesto mm -hmm. in the Times and his brother read it and recognized uh, the language, the ideas and was faced with this terrible dilemma whether to turn him in or not, which I found really touching. Mm -hmm. And then it turned out um, we had all sorts of connections to Ted Kaczynski. Um, he had, well, one of our former students had been working for a professor who got one of his first packages, which blew up when he opened it. He survived, but he was really hurt. And, um, and then it turned out that Kaczynski had been a student at Michigan for five years getting his math PhD. And when his identity was revealed, uh, one of his former professors said, well, he was one of my favorite students. I gave him an A+. Plus. He was brilliant. And as a professor there myself, I wondered what I would have done if I had read the manifesto and recognized a mm. former student's writing, someone I had really cared for, would I have turned him in? So that became the basis of the plot. That's that, really interesting. And I should add that uh, Yale professor David Gallerter was also one of the recipients of one of the Unabomber's bombs. So, mm. you know, there are a lot of connections. I'd say. Wow. So, so talk about the main characters in the book, if you would. Well, the main character is a professor. Um, unlike me, she doesn't teach creative writing. Okay. <laughs> she runs something called the Institute for Future Studies, which, as you said, studies the effect of technology on human culture and ways to prolong human life. We, you know, we might one day live hundreds of years, if not forever. Um, so I was just really interested in a woman's view of technology in the future. Um, I have a physics degree, so I've always been interested in, in tech. Well, you have the first yeah. female physics degree from Yale. Well, the, the first undergraduate, <laughs> Undergrad. one, one of the first two. That's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, uh, you know, I could also sort of, I, I hate to say it, identify a little bit with what Kaczynski had gone through growing up and being bullied, being ostracized. Right. It shows, you know, that really complicated notion that there's good and bad in, in everybody. Right? Yeah. And I've had so many students like him, you know, mm -hmm. these sort of ang brilliant, angry, right. alienated, very lonely young men in my classes and gotten to know them really well, connected with some of them, and some of them just never was able to really reach. So I really wanted to explore that. The mm. character also has a son. So she, the plot is she doesn't know whether to turn in her former student. Um, she's not sure she's right. She really cared for him. But also she thinks her son, who was friends with, I call him the Technobomber, uh, might have been involved and he's been missing. So she, you know, as a mother, as a teacher, she doesn't know what to do. Interesting. Wow. Um, talk to us a little bit about immortality. That's something that I think people don't, is it really a good thing? We think it is, and then you really think about it, and you're like, oh, well, that's why. Right. So I wanted, I've always been really curious. I mean, even when I was a little kid, I just couldn't accept that I was going to die someday. And then um, much more recently, I don't know if you've heard of Ray Kurzweil, there are people who predict that by the middle to end of this century, um, technology and medicine will combine to produce what he calls the singularity, and then we'll live forever maybe partly bionic, maybe with our brains uploaded into wow. a computer. Oh my and goodness. <laughs> I, I think he's premature, I mean, overly optimistic. Um, it, but certainly in the next century, I think human lives will be much, much prolonged. So I wanted to look at what that's going to do in terms of how we live our lives, right. um, how we relate to our parents, our children, our grandparents, religion. Mm -hmm. If people never die, what, what does that do to our notion Jeez, of everything. heaven and hell? Sure, right. Literature, art. Um, and so one thing I do is my uh, heroine, Maxine, teaches classes on immortality studies, which I made up. But she gets, I get in the opinions of these 18 and 20 year olds on what they think of it, but I also, she's in her 50s, and even though she once wanted to live forever, she's now she's lost her husband, her son is missing, mm -hmm. she, she sometimes can't make it, doesn't know if she can make it through the next day. Right. Her mother's dying in the nursing home, mm -hmm. so I wanted to get, you know, so much of our future is being planned by young, straight white guys in their 20s in Silicon Valley, 
but the rest of us are going to have to live in that future. Yeah, so sure. what do they know about life? Right, you know? valid <laughs> questions. <laughs> Just yeah. hitting the tip of the iceberg right. here. But I know that you're on a book tour. It's been out for almost a month. Now, where can we find your book? Well, it should be everywhere. Everywhere, um, great. Um, <laughs> Amazon, online, your favorite bookstore. And I'm reading tonight at R.J. Julia in oh, what a Middletown. Great place. Yeah. So, oh. Beautiful. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Really fascinating sounding book. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Stay